Well, hello and welcome to today's National Soil Survey Center webinar. My name is Sean McVeigh, National Training Coordinator for the Soil and Plant Science Division, and I'm delighted to be your host today. This webinar is being recorded, and all participants join the webinar in listen-only mode. You receive the webinar audio through your device's speakers. There is no telephone dial-in. If you're having audio difficulties, please check the various ways your computer speakers may be muted or have their volume set low, including the speaker adjustments in, uh, available in the Adobe Connect interface. Be sure to turn up the volume if you need. You can maximize your webinar experience in Adobe Connect by shutting down Cisco AnyConnect and any of the programs that might compete for bandwidth. This includes email and Microsoft Outlook. Taking a look at our webinar room layout, Adobe Connect has content pods that include the featured presentation and the Q&A pod. Use the four arrow icon in the featured presentation pod to enter and exit the full screen view as you choose. We're here to answer your questions. To submit a comment or question for me or our presenters, use the Q&A pod and type in your question. We'll handle technical difficulties the best we can while hosting the webinar and interact with our presenter to answer your questions during the verbal Q&A period. I want to thank Drew Kinney for being here to support our webinar and introduce our presenter. Drew, I'm going to turn the webinar over to you so you can introduce the topic and our presenter. Well, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Drew Kinney. I'm the National Leader for Soil Business Systems here in Lincoln, Nebraska at the National Soil Survey Center. And uh, I'm very pleased to uh, introduce uh, Elena Stevens, uh, who has been working to develop a really a pet-on pet data collection uh, application using Survey123. Um, I have to say this is probably the closest to a national, um, a nationally uh, acceptable uh, application, mo widely used application for soil survey and soil scientists particularly, so um, that we've had. We've had a lot of attempts using Excel and uh, various Excel spreadsheets and a number of other uh, Set on PC and and NASA's forms, but this this Survey One Two Three application seems to be uh, probably the most promising for a national uh, standard for uh, soil scientists and soil survey. So Elena has done a tremendous job in in producing this, and uh, it's been in a test phase for quite a while. Um, and uh, Elena, uh, take it away. Thank you, Drew. Hi, thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to talk about entering field data using Survey123. And so this began over a year ago. Kyle Stevens gave a, the Pet on Data Survey Results webinar. Around 37 minutes he starts discussing future requests. And here's some of these requests that people submitted field data collection tools that prevent or reduce the need to fill in the data again in multiple locations. Create an app that works on multiple platforms. Digital transect form, build, build a survey one, two, three form and use it on smart devices. Forms should be easy to customize. Easy to customize, long choice list. Shape files automatically created at some point. Allow for users to create diagrams. See yourself on soil map and other soil digital base layers. And record photos and then upload and store photos associated with GPS form. Work outside of CC environment. And need to be able to say same as the copy last pet on or pet on horizon and start editing existing data. Because of the interest in mobile data collection, the mobile data collection team was created over a year ago also. We met monthly extensively and discussed different solutions for collecting data in the field. We finally decided to use Survey123 for accessibility and the ability to control how the form is created and utilized. Now I'm going to switch, uh, I'm going to be part of this is going to be PowerPoint and part of this is going to be demo and I'm going to switch the demo early on and then go back to the PowerPoint and that will answer some of your questions that you may get from the demo. So Survey123 is uh, form-centric data gathering solution that can work online and offline. We are building the background
information to match what NASA utilizes to make the upload process easier. We are trying to incorporate everything into this form to make future forms, for example, that could be region specific, easier to modify. Now, after you can download Survey 1 through 3 on your Windows device, iOS devices, and Android devices. On the Windows device, since I'm using Alpha Windows today, I'm going to use this form and show you examples. They work the same on all devices. Uh, Windows, you can download it from the Software Center. The newest version was the CCE a couple weeks ago. And what you require to have an RTS Online, also known as AGOL login, which I'll explain that later, how you can get that if you don't have one. And once you're logged in, download, once you're logged in to Survey123 with that login, it will open and it will be blank. I have some that I've been working in lately. And you click in the top right corner, and it'll be your initials, or you could have a profile picture if you've been using RTS Online for a while. You go to Download Surveys and Settings. I'm going to explain Settings first before I go into Surveys. There are different settings here. You may not see all these. There's different ways to get them. Connections. It is important if you need to switch to RTS Online to GeoPortal, you could do that here. That's one way. And RTS Online, it's, you're, you can't have any PII data on that because it's not behind a firewall. GeoPortal is behind a firewall, and we can have PII data on here. There. I put my form on RTS Online because it, I used too many fields, and it could not survive GeoPortal. It would fail. Another thing to be aware of, Survey123, you can use maps. You can take them offline. You can load base maps and other layers on there. And on Windows, example here where it's stored is C users, your username, RGAS, my survey map. And so you can load data in that location and add it in. Another one to be aware of, setting is location, because you can connect different devices. You can add another to make your connection better. So just something to be aware of. All right. I'm going to, if you were downloading a survey for the first time, you click Download Surveys. And it will give you a whole list. You may see a list, or you may see the ones you want. Um, if you haven't downloaded a survey for the first time, it will have a cloud and a down arrow. If you've downloaded before, you'll see two circle arrows. So I've already downloaded this one, circle arrows. If you have an update to a survey, if you can go in and update it, and it will be two circles. And you would click on it to update. And I've set my form up to, if, it, if I push an update through, it will and once you open Survey123, it will show up at the top. So when, once you've downloaded your survey, you click on this. And the first time you open, you will only see Collect and in Inbox. And these other folders will show up after you've entered data for different reasons. And I'll explain those in a little bit. So if you click Collect, the survey will open. If you're loading in the very first time on a smart device and your GPS is on, it'll take at least 30 seconds to load because it will be using your location to automatically fill in data for you in these fields. And since I'm on Windows and it doesn't have GPS, these fields are empty. So I'm going to click on the map and add in my location manually. So this can be used for entering historical pedons also. One way you can do that is you click on the Earth, search, click search down everywhere. You can hit enter, click on map coordinate input only, and you can type in your map coordinates. And type those in. There's an example up here. And you can type those in, and it'll zoom right to that location, and you can add in. I'm going to click on a location and just use it as an example. 
And you can also change your base map to different ones on the right side with the base map layer. You can zoom in and zoom out over here, and the house will send you the home location. So you know, or you can manually zoom in if you're using a mouse. So I'm just going to zoom in as an example. You can zoom in and zoom out as far as you want. And the locations will show the coordinates down here in the left screen. And once you find your location you want, you can click the check mark. And now it will go back to the other screen that we're first in and automatically start loading in information. So it's pulling in data by using the location. Now this does work on offline also. If you stick in airplane mode, it will just pull in the coordinate location down here. It'll pull in latitude and longitude. So now based on this location point I added, it filled in the area symbol. And the pet on ID is based off the number and the tips code area symbol and then filled in the rest of this information. If you don't like something, you can erase it and add in what you want. Or you can regenerate it and, and add it. So you can fix and type in. Any of this can be manually changed if you don't like it. If, um, if you want working offline a lot and you know you're not, this information is not going to change except for latitude and longitude, there is up in the right corner there is a set as favorite answers. You can click on that and it will save these answers as your favorite. And it, will, it can load that in automatically. It won't store your latitude and longitude. So that is one way. And so you can use that. And if you start a new form and you click in the right corner, it will have the option that you can click to add as favorite. There will be a second option here that doesn't show up right now. And it will automatically load in that information. You can set whatever field you want. Accuracy is something that will show up in the, on the smart device with GPS. It will automatically load your accuracy. The base, if you click on the soil web link, it will pull up that location in the web browser and so you can see your soil lines right now. So you can see that. Uh, that is built in. You can also launch Google Maps and it will launch that location if you needed to see something. There's another option built into it. So based on location. All right, field maps, you can launch field maps. is another app that you can download to a smart device that Esri has created. It works on Android and iOS devices only currently. The and Collector is another device uh, app by Esri, and you can use it to look at your location is another option and you can look at your maps that way. All right, I have two built-in questions that are required. One is this answer if it's subaqueous, and it's a yes or no, and then I'll point out the other one. Now right now, at the bottom of the screen, is one of seven, page one of seven. One of seven. Once you, if you answer the question subaqueous, it will change one of eight. It shows a hidden page for the subaqueous coastal zone people. 
If you answer no, it will just show one of page one of seven. So I'll do the yes for now. We can also attach photos. So you can take a picture in the field on, and load it in. You can also load it in from your phone if you're already, or device if you've already taken a picture. You can draw on the screen and pick your colors and type and draw symbols by clicking on the paint. And you can draw whatever you want. You can use arrows. You can draw freehand, change your colors. Lots of different options. You can also type in. If another option would be to click on the map, and if you needed to, take a picture of the map you're in, the location you're in, and you can zoom to it and find it. And you can check mark, and it would take a picture of that. So I've added that little graph. So you just click the check mark and it'll save that picture. And anywhere you see a trash can, you can delete it if you don't want to keep it. And you can also go back and view, edit, and rename it by clicking on the three dots. So we'll page to the right. And these, you can fill in your name, Figure's name, add in a, a symbol, and fill in. It's all pretty much self-explanatory on that. I built in all the domain lists from NASA's, or they should be from what I was given. You can type in a letter, and it will shorten the list if you, if you want to pick something else. And it's built in to pick up your weather temperature. There's a weather script built in. So it should pick up that. And you can just fill in this information. And you can change anything. If you need to change stuff for legacy pet ons you change it here. This is the other second required entry is the pet on number. So you enter the number. And it automatically adds it to the pet ID number at the top for you. So let's keep scrolling down, and I'm going to enter anything. If you see an arrow like this, it means you have more options that may be hidden, and you can open them and add more information. So I'm going to add this in, just some random information, and I'll sh and show you why in a little bit. And elevation is another field that will be show up automatically on your smart, smart device when GPS is turned on. It will automatically fill in your elevation. And this aspect, if you click on this compass in the field with GPS on, it will automatically, when you're pointing to that location, it will automatically give you a number. So I'm just going to type in something real random right now, and it will fill in the aspect. Then you can type in your slope number. And anything that didn't have a long list, I built it in in a short list to make it look quick, quick. So you can pick your make, pick them real quickly options. Some of these other fields automatic also built in from other layers I've stored on AGOL. So clicking through, and all right, anywhere, remember, drop down, arrow, it will open up more options. Now here, it's, when you enter a top depth and a bottom depth number, it will enter the number. We can enter the number. Sorry, mine froze up real quick. Okay. 
and our number and our bottom number and this with a trash can, one of one with a plus. It means it's a repeat. And you can add more than one option in it. So when you click the plus, it will become two of two. And it took the bottom depth from the previous answer and put it in the and put it in the top depth. And then we can keep going and add in more information. And it keeps adding in. And so anywhere you see these top depths, top depths and bottom depths, you can do that and more. And all right. So all this information. And see, there's more top depths and bottom depths. And it just repeats that top number. All right, and the picture st stays with it. So continue on. All right, here's the subaqueous page. So if you click yes, you will see this. If you click no, you will not see this. And as before, they can enter all this information in. And there's even the edit sketch they can edit too if they wanted to. They needed to. All right. Keep going. All right. Vegetation. I've linked in the plant database website. So when you click on that, that will open. They just updated it recently, so I had to update my link. And so you can, if you need more information, you can click on that. And so here, if you can enter information by symbol or common name. And the symbol, if you type in Viola, it will drop, bring in a drop-down list. So type in it, your symbol, and it works for common name. It will automatically input your common name for Violet. And I've linked the great thing about the Plant Database website is they use the symbol name. So I've linked it in where it will automatically input the symbol name. So when this opens, it should open in Viola, but it's been hit and miss since they've updated it. I've noticed I've had more issues with it. Sometimes it opens correctly and sometimes it doesn't. You see it at the top and then it disappears. I'm not sure what's that wrong. And then you can enter your ground cover. And you can add more plant information by clicking the plus. Or you can delete it if you don't need to and delete it. It looks like I have an issue with common name. I'll have to fix that. All right, keep airing over. And here you have a thousand characters to enter any text nodes. So you can enter information, type in nodes. You can add another image if you need to, want to. Same as before. And we'll tab over. All right, here's the horizon information. More drop downs. And you can enter. You can enter top depth. Again, bottom depth information, horizon, and quick clicks. And you can enter the, the colors, information, and you can repeat it here also. The repeat information will be end up in related tables stored on RTS Online. So if you look on there, that's the way it will be stored. And your pH made this quick number, link on. And then some of these fields are just because we're using subaqueous right now. They will disappear if you click no and they won't show up. So you'll see two different things depending on what you answer for the subaqueous question.
and more repeat information and more enter notes. And down here, you can add a second horizon by clicking the plus. And it automatically put that bottom depth from previous one to here. And, the, and then you can add in more information. And add in as much information as you want. So I'm going to page over to the right again. I added this just to see how it D for DSP, because I know you guys are working on that a lot. If you've already, I set it up, if you've already entered a field previously, it will show up right here. And so you can see that information. But if you have, I know there's a couple fields that don't show up anywhere else, and you can add that information here and click on it. You need it for DSP. And if you didn't add this stuff in previously, it won't show up. Some of these won't show up because of a relate issue, and I'll have to fix that. But once you add it in, it'll sh show it. And if you go back and look at your roots under Horizon, you can go back and look. And you can see it. And if it doesn't show up, you can go back and check it. Check pores. And sometimes you have to click a plus, and sometimes there'll be a refresh. I just made this modification yesterday. I'm still figuring some of this out. All right, I've had this request before. People wanted to be able to check their answers before they submit it. So I set up a read-only page at the very end. So anything that you've entered will be in red. And we'll read it as red. And you can scroll through and check to see if you've it what you've entered. And if you forgot something, you can go back and enter it. And if there is anything that had multiple locations that will repeat, it will show the red on top as your last answer, and the bottom it will show it in chronological order that you entered it, and it will be black layered underneath. I was looking for example, and don't see one. So I thought I had one in there. But if you can you click the pages eight of eight and jump back and fix something if you don't see it. And it may have been because I entered the second right horizon. All right, and then when you're done with it and you like it, you can check mark it. You can you have the option to send now, continue the survey, and save an outbox. You can send it now if you're collected to Wi-Fi, you're collected online. Go ahead, submit it. If you're not done with it, you can just save it. And if you need to come back and enter, it, finish, enter it the next day. Or you can save it if you're in the field. You're not connected to any. Wi-Fi or online, you can save it to your Outbox and send it later. I'm going to save it to the Outbox for right now. These different options, Inbox, Drafts, Outbox, Sent, somewhere they do have different options. So if you click on Inbox, you'll see your list, map, 
You can make it just a list or map or and refresh. The refresh should pull in any the ones that have been entered on another device that have been entered. If I entered some on um, the cell earlier, the plain list. And if you're working with a coworker and you want to use their stuff, you can pull it in and look at it. You can copy, you can view it. You won't, shouldn't be able to edit your coworker stuff, but you should be able to copy data to a new survey and use what they've entered already and then change any answers that you want to change. But because these are mine, I have the option to edit. So, and here you also have the change. You can change your base map layer, zoom in, zoom out, all the same options as, in, as you'll see using any of these Esri devices or apps. When you click on the three dots, you click on this one, it will drive to, you can get options to drive to Windows Maps, walk to Windows Maps, and open Google Maps. And you can also click on, if you click on the map, it will open the map and go to that point location. So that's good to know and to use that refresh to bring in any points that might be in that area that you're looking at that have already been completed. We'll go back and draft. We'll store anything that you've, you've had to quit suddenly, the app closed on you by accident, you've closed the app by accident, it will be stored here in the draft location. And you can just click on it and reopen it. And it'll load back in and you can make your edit. And it will take a few seconds to open. And then once it opens, you can continue your edits, changes, anything that you need to do. The other thing that you can save and draft that I recommend is saving that set as favorites if you want to use that. Save it as a draft because it will either end up in the sent folder or the draft folder. And I'd save it as a draft. And when it's in that draft folder, it will have a little start icon next to it so and you'll know which one it is so you can use it so it opened up I didn't mean to open it but so I'm going to exit right after. So th then you have the option of close and lose changes, continue survey, or just save it and draft. I'm just going to close it since I didn't have any changes in it. So that is draft. And yeah, you'll see a little star over here. So I'll have one right now. And the out box will be everything that you've submitted. So, and you can, if you're connected to smart device, to online or Wi-Fi, you can send all your points from the day. You can send them all at once if you want. There's that little star that I was talking about. That's your favorites. That's how you know it's your favorites. Be marked by that. And then there's, there's the sent folder, and it looks just like any of the other folders. It, it'll be the points that you've submitted will show up in this folder. You can empty them all out at once if you want. And when you click the three dots, this will show up in every folder, those options. You can delete them too manually. There is an, an option that's not folder that's not showing up right now, and that is overview. And usually it will show all these folders in one location, and then you can manually work with these. And if you want to delete the survey ever, you just click on the three lines at the top and click on delete survey. And then your offline maps are also stored there to be available to use. I don't have any currently. So you know, we can create maps that work offline. There's a couple ways to sideload it 
to use data offline. I wanted to show you the overview folder. It's in this older one. And the one difference from the overview folder than all the other folders is that you can actually add a point here using this. And you can select your location where you want, zoom in, zoom out and hit the check mark and it will open that survey into there. And so that's another option where you can open one and start entering data in to it. All right. And I'll show you collector collector and field maps are very similar. Field maps is essentially the new collector. It's going to be uh, it will be uh, more, uh, you can enter data easily enter it, into it, and we can control how, what you're seeing. In collector and field maps, I mean, this work very similar. You can add a point here, wherever you want, and add it. The difference is that these on the left side, these fields, you will see everything in collector. And it even feels that you don't even need to see, it will show up. But, and you would manually have to enter all this information versus entering it uh, instead of the automatic loading. So th that is one option. The drop downs are included, so they are there. But that helps. But I would stay with Survey123 for entering that. I think it's easier. But this is another option, just to be able to see the data. And you can zoom in, zoom out. You click in the right corner, you have the map contents. You have the layers. You can see the data. And these couple of points I've added already. And when I click on them, the you, it should show up, do a pop-up. And I do have the soils information loaded for Region 11 as an example that I can, we can load in the soils data on the ArcGIS online and see it and use it. And then you also have bookmarks, change your base map, and you can online, or you can have them for on device. And you can measure oh, another great option to have wherever. Oh, there it is. There it's showing the you see in red what the information that we that has been entered already from the Survey123 app. This link is supposed to open Survey123, but I noticed it had an error bugged out earlier. They changed the setting in AGOL, and it's not opening correctly. So I've got to figure that one out. Part of the technology stuff breaks. Something else you can use is ArcGIS Pro. I've already loaded in the map, but with your login, you can get in the portal into ArcGIS Online, and you can load in your map. You can add, right-click on it, add and open, and it will open the map. And you can use look at your points that way also. You can use it by point, the map, or you can also load in just the data by right-clicking on it and add the current map or add to new map and just use the data that way. And then we'll be able to, should be able to select and export the data out from there. All right, I'm going to switch back to the PowerPoint. And I'll finish the session.
So survey, here's a comparison picture of survey one, two, three, collector and field map. Survey, so reminder, survey one, two, three is form centric with the ability to auto load information. Collector and field maps apps are map centric with the ability to fill in data. They both can use drop down domains. Collector will show every column, even columns that you don't need filled out. The feature service for field map can be altered to show only the maps that need attributed. Esri will be working to auto load information in field maps feature service as like it does in survey one, two, three. So I'm going to keep my eye on that and see if we can utilize that in the future. According to Esri, the collector app will be deprecated at the end of the year for IO iOS and Android devices. It means there will be no updates that will remain in the app stores. They haven't announced a deprecation date for Windows. They have no plans currently to develop field maps for Windows. All right. The feature service, this diagram to show, kind of show, the feature service that w works for Survey123 and, and used in the web map works in Collector, Field Maps, and ArcGIS Pro. It can be used for web apps and dashboards, and there's some um, development I mean, I've been working on that we can utilize it for. So this one feature class from one survey one two three can be used for everything else. So it's, okay. All right. Now if you've asked in where here's you can download it from Software Center, Survey One Two Three and it is it's great that they finally added Software Center and you can download it yourself and update it when it gets updated. If you're using a smart device, work device, check your apps at work or app store on your smart device. IT can download Collector on your Windows device. Collector and Field Maps are downloadable in apps in their app store. There, this was reported the other day. I saw a note about it from Gary that there have been issues with downloading Field Maps from the apps at work secure container on your I devices, don't do it. Recent attempts have resulted in hours of churning and no results. Download the field maps from the Apple App Store. The app will be converted to a managed app per a recent discussion with CEC Mobility Representative. As far as downloading from iTunes, the application is set to automatically convert to a managed application. That means when it's acquired from iTunes Store will automatically convert the application into the same version as if it was downloaded from apps that work. All right. If you need the, if you need, if you, if you need a username and password, so they are required to access RTS online for non-public data. So you can get the username and password from the ServiceNow link, and and you just put in put need a GOL account and with your email employee's name and email address, and they'll send you that information. The user account provides a GOL access to Survey One Two Three Collector Field Maps in ArcGIS Pro, and if you. You want to test this to access this form. You must be a member of the Soil Survey Mobile Data Collection Group, and here's the ArcGIS Online website. And you just look for the group and click on Join the group, and then we'll add you in to the group. And then you can access the Pet-On description form to and try it out. And the mobile data collection channel under was created under NSSC Teams. So any updates and reference material I'll post here. I'll post this PowerPoint there also under the files. So if you have any questions or suggestions, go to the mobile data collection channel and type them in. And add them there, and we'll answer them and try to take your suggestions if you have them. That, that would be great. 
And if, if you have any training needs, you can add, find that under Esri Academy. And there's some great training under the catalog and field mobility. You can search Survey123. And the, here's a couple examples, ArcGIS Survey123, and then get started with Survey123. What we need from you, test it. Enter data. Uh, Kevin Gossie told me, tell them to enter the data. And we want to know what is relevant to answer for each region. And enter legacy pet on data. Figure out if we need to add something else to help with the legacy pet on data entry. Let us know your scenarios. I know each one could be, each location could be different. And let us know what you like, don't like and any issues that you're having, and we'll try to figure out a way to solve them. And any suggestions, please. And a huge thank you to, to everybody who has already contributed with testing and suggestions. A future thank you to any future testers and contributors. And a thank you to Drew Kenny, Kyle Stevens, Kevin Gossie, and John Hammerly, and Jay Scoblin Adolfo, and the Mobile Data Collection team. There's a, a lot going into this. And the, we're still working on it for the NASA's part of it, upload process. And any questions? Elena, why don't we give people a chance to enter some questions in the Q&A. We do have several in there. But I know you prepared some questions for people. Do you want to show those now or, or okay. not? Uh, yeah, that's fine. We can do it now. Just flip on on the poll questions. So we've got a series of six poll questions here. If folks would just take a moment to answer these for us. So, Alina, I know one of the, the comments in the Q&A that came in is that people really like the ability to add a an image to this tool. Do you want to say something mm -hmm. about that while people answer these questions? Great. Yes. That, I, I know people are asking for that, and it's great that we can add those in. And, are there certain file um, types that are required, or? Um, I'm not. I'm not sure if they take like. I, I haven't looked into that. I think there are maybe a couple different options. Uh, I think I've just done pictures and just done the graphics so far. So we would just have to try. I'm not sure if they take um, PDFs. So if you try to upload that, that may, it might not do that. Seems like I've seen a question about that on the Esri site sometime. I think All most right. people have answered these questions. You want to review any of these with folks? Sure. You can show. Okay, so you have access now, yep. Sean. Okay. All right. 79% have not used Survey123. Well, I hope the 79% that will change and you will try it. And good job, yes. Survey123 can be used online and offline. And current data device, yep, Windows 30% and iOS 37%. Okay, that's great. That's good to know, information that you know, what devices you have. Do you have a smart device? Yes. Okay, 67% yes. Okay, great. 30%, 3% no. And do you want a smart device? Yes, 83% yes. Yes. All right, and will you test the pet on the description form in Survey123? And 59% yes. And I hope the other 30% Okay, three thirty-six percent chance that maybe 
And I hope anybody to know that you will at least try it. Well, the vast majority of people on this uh, webinar are definitely going to try this tool. Let's go to the, the question Scarlett asks. On the location info page, was the area symbol the county FIPS code? Yes, that is the county FIPS code is the area symbol. All right, and then Carlos asks, how does the DSP inputs know which horizon to populate? Um, you would have to enter that. You could, you would, you would enter that manually. So the, um, it's written in as far as the DSA inputs. It's what you've inputted previously, and you can change it at any time if you change your mind. If there's, if it, you need more information than what we currently have, we could add that. But I was just going off. Uh, somebody had asked for a, something prior and so I was using that information. But we don't have to include that if you don't want that to enter the DSP information like that. All right. Jeff is asking, do all fields with auto populate require being connected to data or Wi Fi? I have a Wi Fi only tablet. Um if it would for the auto population, yes, it would need a connection through Wi Fi or online. But that's where I'm saying you, you could do the auto population. If you know where you're going for the day, use that favorite and just automatically set that prior and you just use that. And the otherwise, because if you're just using, if you get no cell service, you would use, it would pick up your coordinate location and only enter in your latitude and longitude otherwise. And I've tested that with putting myself in airplane mode. And I know a few weeks ago I was out hiking in the middle of nowhere. I tested it. I couldn't. I didn't get cell service at the bottom of the hill. I went to the top of the hill. I got cell service, and it was just enough to enter the information. So there's going to be different scenarios like that, and we'll, we'll help you with any workarounds we can. All right, another question from Jeff. Is this current form in beta test? He says the U.S. Forest Service is working with NRCS on DSP projects. Um, this is, we're, we're doing beta testing right now, and we would like people to enter information. We are trying to finalize the NASA's upload part. And I don't know, if Drew, if you have any more input on that. Yeah, You're it's still going to be starting to work on that uh, for the NASA's uh, upload part uh, probably after July. So we're hoping sometime, you know, by, uh, by the end of the summer we'll have something, uh, at least an application, that we could upload that uh, JSON file. Okay. Yeah, and then we're also, Jay Scoblin and, and Kevin Gotti and have been working on it that we could create an upload through PET on PC and upload to NASA through that way. So that's in progress also when we get the other way working. All right, we've got a question from Ann who has an Android device. She says, are there instructions on how to download the app into an Android? It keeps asking for my ArcGIS login. Yes, I have started instructions. They are in draft mode. I can stick them in the mobile channel under NSSB Teams, but it will just be in draft right now. But there are instructions. If you have an ArcGIS Online account, you can just log in because it does require your login to be able to access that stuff. All right, Russ is asking, can we download the pet on data in a clear format to put in our case files? Uh, I'm assuming that you mean paper. Um, we might be able to, I'm, uh, I'm not thought that far ahead, but we can put it in to look at it, and we probably could create a report and be able to do it that way. There's probably a way to do it. 
And then a follow-up question from Russ is, can the PETON data be inputted into NASA's? Okay, I mentioned this earlier. Yes, we can get it into NASA's. They're working on a PETON PC upload right now to go through that way. And then, as Drew mentioned before, about the other upload they're working on for NASA. So it will get there, yes. So, and right now, test it and try this. Give us data to so we can test more of the uploads. All right, Rob is asking, what is the latest version of PetOn description? He has version 1.6, and he wants to know how does he get version 1.8. I will share that once we're done with this from the webinar. You have to be added to that team on AGOL, as I mentioned before in the slides, and it, the newest version will be up, uh, updated there. I haven't shared it yet, but I will right after this is over. Scarlett says, at the end, you very briefly mentioned the next steps for NASA. What's the vision for plan or integration with NASA in the future. Drew, do you want to reiterate that again? Yeah, eventually it's going to be uh, what we plan on doing is just having a, a one-button upload, um, much similar to how the PET on PC application does where you just, you know, basically one one click, one or two clicks and it uploads into NASA. We plan on the same kind of process for uh, survey one two three application and uh, uh, basically it's fairly straightforward. We don't think it's going to be a difficult uh, programming feat because it's a it, survey one two three exports it as a JSON, what's known as a JSON file, and uh, we can uh, actually import those straight into NASA. So um, the upload process should be fairly straightforward. It's just uh, we need to get our uh, our. Uh, contractors uh, time to work on it so that's what we're waiting for all right Greg has an issue he says I tried opening survey one two three and it asked for my ArcGIS online account I put that in and it says denied public account user cannot access this application make sure you're using the NRCS login ArcGIS online account. Make sure it's not your personal account that you may have for the Esri training site. That is completely different. So your login name should have the underscore NRCS with it and then whatever your password is. So if you don't have that, then you need to get one from the ServiceNow site. If you're still and having issues, let me know. <laughs> And Matt has a question, can we use this app connecting via GeoPortal and work behind our firewall for PII data? You can. The pet on description form will not run from there. I'm not running it from GeoPortal. But you can use Survey123 and the other apps from, that, from GeoPortal if you're using other data, you can. But it, this pet on description would fail because you can only have I think there's a limit of 500 lines or something, and my form quickly exceeds that with having adding in the read-only information, page information. And Jeff has a question. Can U.S. Forest Service employees log in with their AGOL account, or do they need the NRCS login? They, I'm guessing they would need the NRCS login. So that would probably be a question for the people in Fort Worth about that, but that would be my guess. They would need the AGOL login. All right, and just uh, <clears throat> two final comments. One from Sheila says, I just downloaded the app on my phone and there was a choice to continue without logging in. And Jeff is looking forward to giving it a try. All right, great, thank you. I'm glad to hear that. So I hope everybody will give it a shot. And if you, if you have any issues, message me, let me know, go to the Teams, go to the Mobile There channel and use that. And let's get this working. And remember, we're running everything. We're trying to make it this, use NASA as the background 
as far as entering stuff in the background. So to so we can make it region specific or change it later on. And uh, and it'll make the upload process easier. Well, thank you, Alina, for your time and effort to make this presentation. And thanks to all the participants for joining in. We had well over 100 people join today's webinar. The on-demand recording of this webinar will be available on our YouTube channel, along with over 200 webinars and training videos. Simply search for NRCS National Soil Survey Center on this topic in YouTube, and you'll find the recording.